Hi, today we're going to look at our last Bible lesson on the spiritual disciplines. And today we're going to be looking at two that are related, um, being part of the church and being connected to Christ so that we can do his work in the world. So um, to start with, let's talk about church for just a second. For most of us, what comes to mind when we think of church is a building, but it's actually not a building. It's a body. It's a group of believers that are joined together for a common purpose, and that is to glorify Christ. Well, what does Paul say about this? What does he say about this idea of the body? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, this is what he says. For just as one, just as the body is one and has many parts, and all the parts of that body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. And indeed, the body is not one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it is not for that reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it is not for that reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts of the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? And as it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor. And our unrespectable parts are treated with greater respect, which our respectable parts do not need. Instead, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable. Now, Paul uses repetition and parallel structure here to emphasize the point that he's making. He talks about Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, the body this, the body that, the hand this, the foot that. He, he does all this repeating, and he says the same things in several different ways. He's trying to emphasize the point that the diversity of the parts is necessary because Paul could have stopped at the body analogy alone. Now, we all have different roles. But we all have to pray, give, and support ministry. We have to share our faith and make disciples. All the body members are important, not just the visible ones. Let's think about the brain and the lungs. We need the brain and the lungs just like we need the hands and the feet, and we don't even see those very much. Well, what Paul is saying here is that we've got to have all the parts of the body for the body to work properly. In the same way, we've got to have all the parts of the church for the church to work properly. It's not all about one person or two people or a small group. It's about everybody. So, if our church is going to be healthy, if our church is going to work together, we have to work together like the parts of a body do. We don't work against each other. We work for each other. Now, the Corinthian church was not perfect. They fought a lot. They had um, problems with cult of personality. This group wanted to follow this pastor. This group wanted to follow this leader. They had a lot of problems with trying to be, trying to better each other. They had problems with self-centeredness. But the thing about it is, we, like the Corinthian church, have to learn to work together in all of our diversity in order to make God's work in the world work. Now, Jesus has something to say about this too. This is in John chapter 15. And this is what he says. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he's thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, they throw them in the fire and they're burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and you prove to be my disciples. Now, what is Jesus talking about here? Well, 
to kind of put this into perspective, a very wise man by the name of Henry Blackaby once wrote a Bible study called Experiencing God. And one of the biggest takeaways for, from experiencing God is that we should look around us and see what God is doing in the world, in our world around us, in the world, it's in the bigger, larger world itself. And we should join into what he's doing. We should um, figure out what where, where God's work is going and then join in with that. Well, if we do this, how, how do we know? How do we know that we can that we can join God's work in the world? Well, we remain connected to Christ, and we remain connected to each other. Now, Jesus uses this analogy of being the vine and the branches. Okay. In the book of John, Jesus uses seven I am statements. Now, this I am statement is to emphasize uh, his connection to God, because this is the name God told Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, the great I am has sent you. And Jesus told his disciples that he was the bread of life, the light of the world, the gate, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, and the true vine. Now, all of these are everyday examples. He did not pick some weird something that they wouldn't have understand, understood, like, you know, I am the computer, mon uh, you are the computer monitor, and I'm the internet. He didn't pick that. He picked stuff like bread and gates and shepherds, because this is stuff they were familiar with. And they could understand how Jesus was necessary. They understood how all of these things were necessary to their life and how that Jesus is necessary to our lives. He is the source of life. And without him, we're nothing. Now, vines and branches. Let's think about that for just a second. The vine being the 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 root or the main trunk of the of the plant, the branch being the offshoot, and these branches bear fruit. We as Christians are called to be fruitful. Now, what kind? Of, what is fruit? Well, you know, we have that whole fruits of the spirit: love, joy, peace, long suffering, all of that. That that's part of it. But fruit also has to do with how we are perceived to be Jesus' disciples. Do people see us being kind to one another and to other people? Do people see us meeting needs? Do people see us meeting physical as well as spiritual needs? Do people see us um, making disciples of others? That's what we're called to do. We cannot bear fruit without the vines. Without the vine, Jesus himself, we, we can't do this. We cannot function as lone rangers. We have to remain in him. Jesus said, if your branches are not bearing fruit, they're going to be pruned away. That's an idea that, that you know, of Christians losing their effectiveness that are not part of, you know, the mainstream of life anymore and are not bringing people closer to God. When we remain in him, we are connected and we show others that we are disciples. We can change the world to give God the glory when we are a part of part of the vine when we are a branch that's connected. Now, we've talked about the spiritual disciplines of prayer and of fasting. We've talked about the spiritual disciplines of, of gathering together, but we've got to remain connected to each other and we've got to remain connected to Christ to be of any good and to bring glory to God. And that's what I hope that this study on spiritual disciplines has done for you. I hope that it's helped you see how to remain close to God in prayer and your Bible reading and how to be effective in the world. Let's pray. Lord, I just ask you to be with us now as we take, take this study that we've had on the spiritual disciplines and that, Lord, we remember that we cannot do anything apart from you and that without you, we are just like a, a broken branch that is unfruitful. Lord, help us to remain in you. Help us to remain connected to each other. Help us to remain connected to our role in the church. And Lord, never to take each other for granted. In Jesus' name, amen.